Okay, so hello and welcome back to another Unity C Sharp Bite Size tutorial. So in today's video, we'll be covering gizmos as a way to draw lines, meshes, and sprites in the scene view. You'll be familiar with this with certain components in Unity. So the camera component will always render a little sprite of a camera in your scene so you know where it is at all times without having to actually go find it. I'll be covering a few examples of how to use gizmos and then it's up to you to figure out when it makes sense in your game to use them. I hope you're looking forward to it. Let's get started. So as always, I've made a folder for today's project. You can go get this down on GitHub below. Okay, we've got a gizmos folder. Inside this, we've got a scene with nothing really in it right now. And then one simple script called gizmos example, which actually doesn't have anything in it right now. Then back in the scene, we simply have the player object with nothing extra on them, just the normal stuff. And then I've made a cube that has the gizmos example script, which currently has no logic and it sits next to the player. So for those of you who don't know what gizmos are, you probably do without realizing it. Gizmos are simply these icons, like for example, the camera icon, okay? This is always visible to show you just when you're looking around in the scene view where the camera is, you don't have to go finding it. You can easily see where it is, okay? There's actually one over here as well. This is the post-processing one, I think. Then there's one down here for the light source, okay? Now you can do that. I'll be showing you how to do that kind of thing, how to put an icon where a certain component is in case that's what you need. But also we'll be showing another example like for example, in your game, your player might have a pet or you might be able to have certain things follow other things. Maybe you want to visualize a line connecting the things that are being followed so that you can easily see without having to go searching that this cube will be following this player. So we'll have a line connected between the two. And then even if I move the player all the way over there, the line will still be connected. And then perhaps in your game, you have a spawn system for enemies. You might want to visualize the spawn radius. Um, the, normally the only way to do that really would be to stick a sphere collider on there and scale it to the same size as the spawn radius, but why not just draw a gizmo? And that's what we're going to be doing. So let's create the example about the spawn radius. So first of all, let's actually define a spawn radius as a private float spawn radius. Whoops, equals five. Okay, so that's going to be our spawn radius. That's obviously tweakable in the inspector thanks to serialized field tag. And then what we need is we need a method as a place to actually render our gizmo. So there's two of these, there's on draw gizmos and there's on draw gizmos selected, okay? And then what we need is we need to put our logic either in here or here based on when you want to draw it. So if you want it to be drawn all the time, you put it in here, okay? So we're going to draw a sphere with this radius. Now to do that, we type gizmos, okay, dot, and then there are quite a few methods here, draw line, draw icon, draw wire sphere, cube. Uh, there's plenty of these, right? Just look through the different ones. It really depends on what you want to draw for your example but we're making a spawn radius, so we're gonna use a wire sphere. The reason we're not going to use a normal sphere is because then we can't see through it and it can obscure quite a lot of our vision in the scene. But if we use a wire sphere, we can still see through it and still also at the same time know how big it is. So if we draw a wire sphere, it wants to know where to draw it and then the radius. So let's draw it at our position. So transform.position with a radius of spawn radius, okay? Now, by default, this will draw it uh, white, if I'm not mistaken. So it'll be white, but we can uh, change it to be whatever color we want by just doing gizmos.color on the line before equals, and then a color. So I'm gonna say color dot, uh, for the spawn radius, we'll go red, okay? So now we're gonna say, set the gizmos color to red and then draw a wire sphere, which will make it red, okay? And the reason this color thing works is that if we were then to draw something else down here, gizmos dot, uh, draw, you know, something else, then all we have to do is just set the gizmos color here, okay? Now let's test it in Unity. So if we go back over, you'll actually see on our cube now, we have this red wire sphere, okay? And we can tweak the radius like so, okay? So we can now visualize our spawn radius in our game, okay? Without actually having anything in the scene view. No, this isn't visible in the scene. Uh, though we can actually make it visible in, in the game, sorry. I meant game, not scene. So if we press this gizmos button, let's drag this over. There's a gizmos button. There are quite a few settings here, like changing the icon size, toggling certain gizmos on and off from scripts. If you just want to simply see them in the game view, just press it, okay? And now we can see it. And if I change this, you can now actually see the wire sphere. Keep in mind when you build the game and everything, this will be gone. You won't actually see these gizmos. It's just a way for you to visualize it when you're making your game. So if we move the code from on draw gizmos to on draw gizmos selected, when we go back over to Unity and deselect the cube, it goes away, select it, it comes back, okay? That's what we expected, and that's maybe what you want. For this example, obviously, I think it makes more sense to put it over here. And then now, anything with this gizmos example script on will draw a sphere with whatever the radius is. So let's try the other example. If we make a reference to a transform, okay? So for example, that's gonna be the player transform. Let's call it the follow target 
we're not writing actual logic here to do following, but imagine that you had that. We want to say down here, well, if the follow target uh, does not equal null, then we want to say gizmos dot, let's pick a color. Okay, we'll say green color dot green. And then we'll say gizmos dot draw line. Now the draw line method takes in two vectors as basically the start and the end point of the line. So let's draw it between our position and our follow target dot position. This is in on draw gizmo selected. So we're going to get a, a red line, sorry, a green line drawn from our position to whatever our follow target is if it's not null. So if we haven't set it, we don't get errors or anything. So now if I go drag the player into that transform, you notice how we now have a green line connecting the two. If I move this around, we actually see it update in the scene view and currently in the game view because I've got this enabled. It's up to you. Okay. But yeah, I'm liking how this is coming along. Okay, to end off the video, I'll be making this effect like the camera. We'll be putting a sprite on our cube, okay? So what we want is we want a gizmos folder and it has to be called gizmos, okay? So it's in the root of our project. In here, you put your sprites. So I'm gonna put a sprite, uh, where is it? Down here, we'll make a square, okay? It's called square.png. That's the path we need to know. And then we'll say gizmos.drawicon. It wants the position, so here. And then the name, square.png. And then whether it can be scaled, true. If we go back over to Unity, because it's a small image, you have to get close to actually see it, but there is our cube, there's our icon. And you can actually uh, scale these with the little gizmos drop down. If we bring that up, we can tweak the scale of these icons, okay? Obviously it makes everything else huge as well. So that's because this image is just smaller in comparison. But yeah, you can see your, your icon. You can make this whatever you want, whatever makes sense. So you can see it in the scene, just like the camera and the light. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. Let me know down below in the comments what you want to see next. Thanks everyone for watching. I'll see you guys next time and goodbye. But of course, before I go, I've got to thank my patrons. A special thanks to John Selig, Liz Kimber, Drandy, Zumran, David McDermott, Exit, Josh Folsom, Bearded Eye, Dustin Miller, Rack, Eurus Letter, Rene, and Marie Baldwin. If anyone else is able to help support the channel monetarily, link to my Patreon is down below. If not, there are also links down below to other social media, such as Twitch, Twitter, and Discord, as well as our website. If you could help us out by following on any of those or checking any of those out, that'd be greatly appreciated. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching, and goodbye.